A woman's body is found here in Lincoln County tonight. I talked to the man who found her while out four-wheeling with a group of friends. Lexington police are on the hunt for a suspect after an 18-year-old was shot and killed at the party overnight. And another loss for the Kentucky Wildcats as the top-ranked Crimson Tide overpowered the Wildcats in Alabama. WKYT News starts now with breaking news. Good evening and thanks for watching WKYT. We begin with breaking news this evening. One person is in custody after a crash this evening in Lexington. An SUV collided with two people in it, collided with a vehicle around 10 o'clock at the intersection of Interstate 75 and Paris Pike. That's right around exit 113. The vehicle that was hit had a man, a woman, and a child inside. They are expected to be okay. You're seeing video from our photographer who was right near the scene right around the time. You see that Lexington police officer who we understand was off duty uh, putting handcuffs on that man there. Uh, we're told after the crash, two men took off from the SUV down some nearby train tracks. That's when the off duty Lexington police officer you just saw on the screen there arrived and caught one of those men. Now, police tell us those two are suspected of several burglaries in the Polo Club area over the past few weeks. When I was on my way home with my family tonight, I saw it backed into a house that I knew no one was living there. When I saw the red Jeep, I recognized it to be the theft suspects that we're looking for. And um, I saw them carrying out appliances from the house. That's when I uh, started to follow it. I was on the phone with 911 trying to get the guys involved. Hearing from that Lexington police officer there. Now, police say they are still searching for the second person who got out of that car. Our weekend is almost over, and with it comes some warmer weather. As we head into the work week, let's check in now with WKYT Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey with your no wait weather forecast. Yeah, a little soggy out there this evening, Sean. For much of the bluegrass region, especially, not everybody getting in on the rain. And for a lot of us, we didn't get in on the soaking stuff until after the sun had long since called it quits on this first day of October. What's left of the rains now, eastbound across the I-64 corridor. A little heavier burst right on top of Owingsville, Mount Sterling, southern parts of Fleming County, heading toward Moorhead, get into Estill County with a, a little heavier burst of some rain. But overall, just a sprinkle or two left over across the bluegrass area. Same low pressure I've talked about now for the past five or six days. I think six days now that it's Saturday for me. That low is going back into parts of the Great Lakes. It started there on Monday. Middle of the week, it made its way into the Bluegrass State. Now it's heading back to where it started, the journey back into Michigan and southern parts of Canada. Leaving behind a wet ground, you got to watch for some fog tonight, tomorrow morning. It can be thick out there early on your Sunday. And this model, the fog forecast, is targeting parts of the Bluegrass region for uh, some of the thicker stuff early tomorrow morning that will slowly burn away as we get into the noon hour. And that will leave us with a partly sunny sky. But coming up in just a few minutes, Sean, we'll show you an hour by hour forecast that will carry us through our Sunday and early next week that shows how I'm concerned about a shower chance lingering into Sunday before some of the good stuff finally arrives. All right, Chris, thank you. They made a gruesome discovery while out riding for charity. A group riding four wheelers in Lincoln County came across the body of a woman this afternoon. This happened on West Skyline Drive near Stanford. Monique Blair has the latest on the investigation in our top story tonight. I talked to the man who tells me he was out here on West Skyline Drive four wheeling with a group of people when they stumbled across the woman's body. That man who did not want to be identified says he was with a group of several people who were on four wheelers around 1.30 Saturday afternoon when they saw what they thought was a deer. But when they got closer, they realized it was a woman's body. The man says her body was off the road but not deep into the woods. He says she was naked and had something tied around her neck. I spoke with people who live on the road where the woman was found. Ginger Hebrock says she could only think of one thing when she heard the news, her teenage daughter. Where's my daughter? <laughs> where's my daughter? I mean, because she was stayed out last night with her friends, so that was my first thought. Where's my child? Hebrock's daughter was safe. State police are investigating this incident, and they are not saying how the woman died or whether or not foul play is suspected. Hebrock told me she isn't sure what to make of the situation, as police have not released what they believe may have happened. So in the meantime, she plans to be extra cautious of her surroundings. I will watch my back and 
my dog right there will watch our backs. She's definitely one that keeps a good eye. Now, at this time, the Lincoln County coroner has not released information about the woman, nor has Kentucky State Police. In Lincoln County, Monique Blair, WKYT. State police tell us the woman's body will be taken to Frankfurt for an autopsy. That is scheduled for tomorrow. Lexington house party ended violently early this morning. Police say an argument broke out at a large party on Unity Drive just off Red Mile Row. They say shots were fired just before 2 a.m. Police say 18 year old Nathaniel McNeely was shot multiple times. McNeely, who was from Louisville, was taken to UK Hospital where he later died. One person that lives near the area said it was a disturbing sight. It sucks that the kids are out here killing each other. You know, it's, it's, it's like I'm not involved in any way with the, the, the victim or anything like that. It's just, it's really disheartening. Police say they don't have any kind of a description of the suspect. They're asking anyone with information to come forward. The search continues tonight for a hit and run driver who killed a teenager in Louisville. It happened last night in the 600 block of Glengarry Road in the Fairdale area. Relatives say 15 year old Trey Monroe Royce was walking to a friend's house just before 9 to play basketball when a driver hit and killed him and then drove away. The family has yet to make any funeral arrangements. Anyone with information is asked to contact Louisville police. A man is in critical condition this evening after a train crash in Madison County. This happened a little bit after 2 o'clock this afternoon on Menelos Road. It's off Highway 25 in Berea. State police tell us the man was hurt when his vehicle was hit by the train as he was crossing the tracks. They say he was taken to UK Hospital. Now, officers say there are lights and a bell there at that train crossing, but no arm to block traffic. Motorcyclists came together in Bardstown this morning for the fourth annual Officer Jason Ellis Poker Run. The event raises money for the old Kentucky home FOP Lodge 43. Ellis was a Bardstown police officer who was shot and killed back in May of 2013. His murder has yet to be solved. Organizers are hoping this fundraiser also serves as a reminder to what happened to Ellis and hope that it might generate new leads in the case. Just uh, respect for law enforcement. You know, it's just a thing. I know the guys here at Joe Hill that put it on, but it just still is a respect for the law enforcement and all they do. Ellis left behind a wife and two young children. Tonight, the Cats took on the, the number one ranked team in the nation, and while UK started off strong, it just wasn't enough to push back the Crimson Tide. Rob Romley joins us now with highlights from tonight's game. Well, Sean, not easy. Tough test indeed. Taking on number one on the road down in Tuscaloosa. And the Cats are able to get it off to a good start. They work it down. They get a 45 yard field goal from Austin McGinnis. One off the upright. 3 0 Kentucky right at the start. Alabama tied it up with a field goal. Then in the second quarter, Joshua Jacobs takes it over from short yardage. And Alabama goes up for the first time, 10 to 3. Then a tough play for the Cats. Stephen Johnson tucks it, runs, fumbles for the second time in the game. Ronnie Harrison picked it up, brought it back 55 yards to the end zone. Alabama goes up 17 to 3. Into the third quarter, the tide threatening. Jalen Hurts going to a wide open Calvin Ridley. Alabama in control, 24 to 3. Alabama tacked on another touchdown and a field goal, 34 straight points, 34-6 the final. The Cats kicked a late field goal, but Sean, they just couldn't get the offense going against the number one team in the nation. Much more coming up on Game Time. Rob, thank you. Still ahead here on WKYT as Hillary Clinton tries to corner the youth vote. Newly released audio is giving Donald Trump a new line of attack. Uh, the latest on the 2016 presidential race. Your hour by hour forecast with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. That's been a damp Saturday evening for a lot of us across central Kentucky, and that rain train rolls on into parts of northeastern Kentucky as of now. Everybody with another below normal temperature day, and those numbers out there dropping into the upper 50s, low 60s as we speak. It's still got some clouds across the region, and we got to be on guard for some locally dense fog as we make our way into the overnight period. 57, Danville, cool spot. 
across the entire region. Low pressure spinning north of Indianapolis. Same low I've talked about for six days now. And it's going to continue to throw at least a couple of showers into parts of the area right on end of the day on Sunday. Not widespread, but boy, you get under a gusty shower or two, it can put it down in a short amount of time. Rain right now, Fleming County and around County, across parts of Nicholas County. Hello, Mount Sterling and Owingsville. We've got the rain on the rooftop right now. A sprinkle left over in Lexington where we picked up better than a third of an inch of rain for the first day of October here in uh, or at the station on Winchester Road. You get into Estill County, a little heavier downpour heading into Irvine. That'll work its way into parts of Powell County across the Mountain Parkway. How about your Sunday? 50 ish in the morning. We go into the afternoon. Fog may be a problem early tomorrow, by the way. You go into the afternoon, 65 to 70, chance for a shower or a thunderstorm that will be out there. Still on the windy side tomorrow as that upper level low slowly but surely pulls away. It gets better on Monday and that gets even better on Tuesday as temperatures hit the 70s again with plenty of sunshine. Let's show you how we get there hour by hour forecast. Anyone is fair game tomorrow afternoon for a gusty shower thunderstorm to go up. Not all day range, though. Fog to begin the first Monday of October. 70 to low 70s on your Monday afternoon. Let's go into Tuesday. Upper 40s, low 50s. Mid and maybe upper 70s coming up Tuesday. And that's a pattern that can throw an 80 your way into the middle of next week. We are still watching a major hurricane, Matthew, 150 miles per hour. It's category four. Track on this over the next couple of days into early next week. We'll head toward the Bahamas. And from there, it may impact parts of the East Coast at some point later next week. Indirectly could impact our weather, but between now and then, Woo, we're going to get a little on the mild side next week, Sean. Every day, starting Tuesday into Thursday, 75 to 80. Cold front arrives at some point Friday or Saturday. Timing on that depends on what happens on the eastern seaboard. But behind that may be uh, a shot of some very chilly air, chilliest of the early fall season. We'll keep an eye on it. Now, a lot of people here in the building were hoping yeah. for some really good weather today. They were. Yeah. We, we had a little wedding bells uh, we going did. today, did we? We did. Uh, that is uh, Mike Linden right there uh -huh. in the back. A Along with our producer Rachel Hoops there in the white dress. They got married this afternoon, so big congratulations to them. You'll notice the uh, staffing today has been a little bit different because, of course, this is a whole WKYT affair when you got something like that. So, yep. yeah, yep. huge. I'm I'm here so Jim and Micah could both go there today. Right. right? I was taking one for the team. That's guys. how it is. You, you owe me. You got the ones that always get left behind on wedding days and holidays. That's right. We're, right. we're earning our points right now. But yeah. huge congratulations A to Mike absolutely. Linden and Rachel Hoops. Two great people, right? There. Absolutely. Well, Donald Trump is trying to court Bernie Sanders voters after new audio of Hillary Clinton speaking about young voters at a February fundraiser. Brooke Silva Braga has more from New York on the 2016 presidential race. At a rally of thousands of supporters Saturday night in Pennsylvania, Donald Trump brought attention to leaked recordings of Hillary Clinton speaking about young voters at a February fundraiser. A new audio tape shows her demeaning and mocking Bernie Sanders and all of his supporters. In the recording, Clinton sympathizes with young voters' frustrations, but also says... Some are new to politics completely. They're children of the Great Recession, and they are living in their parents' basement. Friday, Clinton called out Trump for his early morning Twitter rant against a former Miss Universe. It proves yet again that he is temperamentally unfit to be president and commander in chief. With voters heading to the polls in 38 days, Homeland Security Secretary Jay Johnson revealed that hackers have gained access to some state voting systems and have taken steps to potentially attack many others. Johnson said 21 states have turned to his department for help. They have not found evidence of any manipulation of voting information. Clinton returns to the trail Monday in Ohio. Trump will be in Colorado. Brooke Silva Braga for CBS News, New York. And the vice presidential candidates will face off in their only debate on Tuesday at Virginia's Longwood University. Good evening, everybody. I'm Rob Bromley. Lee K. Howard off tonight celebrating the birth of his daughter, Margaret Bly Howard. 
We start tonight in Tuscaloosa. How would Kentucky stack up against the number one ranked team in the country? The Cats taking on Alabama down in Bryant Denny Stadium. The defense comes out strong on the first possession of the game. Courtney Love and Jordan Jones make the stop. And Kentucky is able to work it down and get a 45 yard field goal from Austin McGinnis. It went off the upright, went through 3 0 Cats right at the start. Now, Kentucky had another opportunity to get points in the first, but Steven Johnson is sacked. He fumbles. Alabama recovers. Alabama tied it up with a field goal, and then the offense started to move. Here goes Joshua Jacobs down the near sidelines for 28 yards. And down at the goal line from short yardage, Jacobs takes it over. Alabama goes up for the first time. It was 10 3 tied. And a tough, tough play for Kentucky. Johnson tucks it and runs, and he fumbles again. Ronnie Harrison picked it up. He goes the other way, all the way to the end zone, 55 yards for the score. Alabama on top, 17 3. Into the third quarter, the tide threatening. And Jalen Hurts going to a wide open Calvin Ridley. Alabama in control, up 24 3 later in the third. Here goes Hertz again, and again he picks out Ridley. This time it's a 19-yard touchdown pass, 31 to 3, 31 unanswered points. Cats trying to muster some offense late, and they pick up a first down here on fourth down completion to Garrett Johnson. Drive stalled. Mark Stoops went for the field goal, a 30-yarder, that made it 34 to 6. But that was the final. Alabama goes to 5 and 0. The Cats slip to 2 and 3. Other action in the SEC. Florida coming off that loss to Tennessee, playing at Vanderbilt. The Gators, Quincy Wilson coming in to get the sack. That led to good field position for Florida. Shortly thereafter, Jordan Scarlett took it over from four yards out. Florida went up 7 to nothing, And that would turn out to be the only touchdown of the game. Eddie Pinero kicked two field goals for the Gators. Vanderbilt was not able to get the football into the end zone. Florida wins at 13-6. Vandy comes into Commonwealth Stadium next Saturday afternoon at 4 o'clock. Tennessee, Georgia. Tennessee down 17 to nothing before getting on the board. Joshua Dobbs scrambling goes over 17-7. Then in the third, Dobbs to Jalen Hurd. Touchdown, 17-14. Right after that, Georgia comes back. Here goes Jacob Eason throwing to Isaac Nauta. This play covering 50 yards. Georgia back in control, 24 to 14. Three minutes to go. It's 24 21. Eason is sacked by Derek Barnett. Corey Vereen recovers for the touchdown. Fouls go in front, 28 24. It wasn't over. Closing seconds. Eason to Riley Ridley. 47 yard touchdown pass. Georgia back on top. But then, as time runs out, Tennessee had the last say. Dobbs, 43 yards. Joan Jennings leaped up and grabbed it. Incredible ending down at Sanford Stadium, 34-31 Vols. Now we move on to Death Valley in Baton Rouge, Missouri at LSU. Ed Orgeron coaching tonight. The Bengals waste no time, first quarter. The give to Darius Geis, no Leonard Fournette, no problem. 42 yards, LSU up 7 to nothing. Second quarter, it's Geis again. Hits the hole, and he is gone. This one for 37 yards. His third score of the night, 21 to nothing, LSU. Third quarter, LSU puts it away. Darrell Williams, the short touchdown run, 28 zip. LSU a big winner tonight, 42 to 7. Now, one of the marquee matchups around the country, number three, Louisville at number five, Clemson. First quarter, Lamar Jackson finds a wide open receiver, 28 yards down to the Clemson one yard line. That sets up the short touchdown run by Jeremy Smith, and it's 7 0 Louisville early on. After a U of L fumble, Deshaun Watson goes up top, finds Deion Kane, 33 yards, 7 7 game. Second quarter now, it is Watson again, this time going to Artavis Scott, five yards. Clemson led 28 to 10, but this game is going into the fourth quarter. Louisville has come back. Look at this, 28-26 Clemson right now. 
Coming up on Game Time, the start of the OVC for EKU. Colonels on the road at Tennessee Tech. That's next, so keep it right here on Game Time. Tuesday night's Mega Millions jackpot, $35 million. And welcome back. After starting the season one and two, both losses coming to FBS teams, EKU coach Mark Elder said his team was turning its attention to the real season, the OVC schedule. Tonight, EKU with its conference opener at Tennessee Tech. First quarter, Benny Coney hands it off to Jared Sanders. He takes off. This one covers 59 yards for the score. The extra point, no good. Six to nothing, Colonels. Second quarter, trailing 14-6. Coney goes deep and finds Ryan Markush, 27 yards, and it's 17-13, Tech at the half. Third quarter, Coney looking for his big target. Devin Borders, Borders goes and gets it. 26 yards in the end zone. Colonels up 2017. Fourth quarter, less than two minutes to go. Tech up seven. Coney finds Dan Crimmins, 25-yard scoring play. We're tied at 27 and headed into overtime. EKU kicks a field goal on the first possession. Tennessee Tech's Michael Birdson finds Storm Williams wide open. Here's the play that wins the game. Four yards for the score. This is how it ended. Tennessee Tech wins it in overtime, 33-30. Moorhead State in Valparaiso in Jane Stadium. First quarter, it's Moorhead's Lawrence Jones on the give. He breaks the plane of the goal line. Six yards for the touchdown, 7-0 Eagles. On the ensuing kickoff, Valpo's Bailey Gessinger cuts it up the middle, then to the far sideline. This is an 89-yard touchdown run, and the game is tied 7-7. Still had a ways to go. Still in the first, Valpo's Ryan Clark tries to force this pass into a tight window. Couldn't do it. Picked off by Moorhead's Aaron Turk. That set up this touchdown. Lawson Page on the direct snap. One yard for the score. And it comes down to the final 22 seconds of the game. Moorhead trailing. But Austin Gehefer connecting with Jake Raymond. Touchdown, Eagles. Four-yard game winner there. Moorhead State picking up its second win of the season, 29 to 26. And just up the road from Moorhead, it's Georgetown and Kentucky Christian. Second quarter, KCU's Robert Powell throws. Allen Barnes with a pick. He goes 31 yards down to the Knights' 20-yard line. That sets up this Kyle Longworth two-yard touchdown run, puts the Tigers up 21 to nothing. Georgetown picks up the win, 31 to seven. At the Ryder Cup, the United States led by two points going into the day, and the Europeans came back in the morning matches. They cut the United States lead to one point, and then in the afternoon, they tied it, six and a half to six and a half. But Phil Mickelson, playing with Matt Kuchar, defeated Sergio Garcia and Martin Keimer, two and one. That is Mickelson's long birdie putt at number 10. J.B. Holmes played again today with Ryan Moore. J.B. found his game. He rolls in the birdie putt early in the match, the fist pump to go with it. Now it looked like Holmes and Moore would have their match, but Lee Westwood missed a short putt, giving the United States a full point. And Patrick Reed and Jordan Spieth won their match, three up over Justin Rose and Henrik Stenson. The United States leads by three points. It is nine and a half to six and a half, going into the singles matches tomorrow. That does it for this edition of Game Time. We'll see you next week.